I'll be 70 this year and um, life is complicated and I've decided I'm going to simplify it and make some changes. So um, one of the things is my printer. Now multi-input um, hot-ins are all very well but when I step back most of the things that I print are just use a single filament but I still have to have multiple filaments loaded up to six if I'm using six input hot end and then because I've got six extruders I don't want to have long Bowden tubes I mount these on a separate gantry which is the UV gantry so then anything that I slice I have to post process it to generate the UV moves so that it moves the X and Y and the U and the V axis and it's all very complicated so I've decided the time has come to stop messing around with these multi-input hot ends and um, just build a printer that will do single input but do it well. But I don't have the funds to build another printer and nor do I have the space. Um, as things are, this, the, the printer I've got, um, it's over a metre wide with the filament reels hanging off the side of it. Yet the print area is only 400 mil. It sits inside a booth in my garage, which is 1.2 meters wide and 1.2 meters deep, um, which makes it a real pain to work on. I can get it at the front easily enough, but the side and the back, I have to pull the printer out, and there's hardly room in my garage to be able to do that. As soon as I pull it forward, then it's touching the bench, so I still can't get round at the back of it. So I've decided I'm going to cannibalize it and just turn it into a single input. A single filament printer if I had the funds I could maybe build another one and keep this one but I don't have the funds so I'm gonna um, cannibalize what I've got so I might start on the design I've got some criteria that I want to um, some some modifications that I've been thinking about for a while with the existing printer so this one it's, it's gonna be Core XY um, I like that I've got all the motors and everything most most of the frame members I can reuse stuff like that but I need to completely redesign the um, XY gantry. Z-axis all works well, so I can retain that. But one of the things I've been thinking about for quite some while is um, the actual XY motors, or alpha, beta, as they're called on a, on a core XY. When I um, first built the printer and knew even less about printers than I do now, um, I tension the belts really tightly I thought that was a good thing to do um, really tightly uh, and then when I went to try and move the XY gantry they would hardly <laughs> the motors just wouldn't move um, just too much tension so it's obvious that a lot of belt tension does side load the, um, the shafts on the motors and makes them difficult to turn um, whether that was just my particular motors, um, whether that's the case with every stepper, I don't know. But then some time ago, I actually um, had a had a motor fail, and um, just for int interest, I, I took it apart. Have you ever seen the size of the bearings on a Nema 17? They're tiny little things. So I kind of came to the conclusion that they're, they're really not suitable for heavy side loads or any kind of significant side loading I don't know maybe I'm on the wrong tack but that's something that I've that I've come to so what I've decided to do on this printer is to uh, remotely mount the motors and join them and put the the main drive pulley on a separate shaft and then have another pulley on the bottom of that shaft that will connect to the motor, a little continuous belt type thing, and have the motors off to one side. But it's slightly complicated because um, I just kind of clamp the belts onto the carriage and then I used to um, tension the belts by moving the motors backwards on the frame. So the clamped in place with bolts clamping them down to the frame itself so to tension it I undid those bolts and then I had a screw on the front went through the frame and would push uh, or rather 
pull the motor plate back against the frame to tension the belt and then I could do the clamp bolts up. So I quite like that arrangement, it's, um, it's a cheap and easy way of tensioning the belt. So I wanted to do the same thing, um, but with these remote pulleys, shall we say. And the other thing is I want to enclose this printer. So I want all the frame members to be clean, nothing sticking out the edges so I can screw panels on, on the outside of the frame. So this is what I've come up with so far. Here are some pictures that I've exported from my open SCAD design that I'm doing. So this is the first picture showing a corner of the frame. Um, so the red lines denote the um, lower belts and the blue ones the upper belts. And then there's a, a yellow one at the bottom which is the motor belt. So essentially I've got a, um, a plate top and bottom that's normally clamped to the frame um, where it says their upper upper rail mount so there'll be a, a t-nut and, and a bolt in there and then uh, plate top and bottom with a right angled chunk sandwich in the two plates and so there's um, a substantial shaft going through the middle of both of those plates which um, I've currently modeled it as being six mil um, I might go as high as eight but we'll see I think six mil will be sufficient and then I use flange bearings in each plate capable of higher side loading than the than the tiny little ones in the NEMA 17 and so then in the shaft you can see where the um, the lower red belt will go and uh, it's a 20 tooth pulley in there with a six mil ball I'd say I might go to eight I don't know and then uh, there's a plate that bolts to the front uh, frame cross member and, that, and the adjuster bolt will be countersunk or the header will be countersunk and it will be a clearance through that plate and then go into the adjuster itself which is threaded and then there'll be an access hole in the front plate for an allen key to go through and adjust those screws so basically to tension it's slack on the upper and lower mounting bolts and then screw the adjuster bolts in or out which will move that plate forward and backwards so I've currently got about 14 mil of movement which should be more than enough and then once the belt's tight just um, tighten the upper and lower uh, frame mounting bolts there's another picture which shows it from underneath so the the um, the belt from the NEMA 17 to the pulley on the bottom of the shaft that's uh, shown in, in yellow there. I've just modelled one side of it. It will be a continuous closed loop belt. As I've modelled it, it's 160mm long. Um, but I've actually bought 200 mil belts. So the the motor itself will be further to the right. Or it might not be, but I'll come to that in a bit. So I've just modelled the, um, the adjuster bolts as simple cylinders, which are shown there. So there'll be an access hole where those cylinders look like they're poking through the frame there'll just be an access hole there for me to get an allen key in so then this uh, third picture it shows that the plate that will take the mounting screw it's moved forward uh, backwards i should say 14 mil from when it, where it would normally be so you can see the countersunk head where the adjuster screw will sit so it doesn't foul on the frame member when it's when that plate is bolted back to the frame so on the adjuster plate itself it's threaded so basically turning the adjuster screw um, which is a countersunk thing and sits in that plate will pull this plate backwards and therefore tension the belt and uh, lastly this picture is the um, is the bigger picture as it were so currently that the, the frame as it stands as the printer is now is 600 by 600 and i'll probably keep that um, so that shows how that lot fits in in the bigger picture so this will allow me to use uh, more substantial bearings on the belts um, and then the tension between the motor and the bottom pulley um, can be a lot less as long as the belt doesn't slip and there's no slack in it or anything um, but I should be able to do the belts a lot tighter than one would normally do but then um, the other thing that occurs to me is um, 
I always like to work in whole steps um, where possible. So with a 20 tooth pulley 2 mil pitch, you get 80 steps per mil at 16 times micro stepping, which is effectively five full steps per mil. So if you want to print a part that's accurate to within 0.1 of a millimeter, it means you have to rely on micro stepping to hold the motor halfway between two full steps. And nobody's actually successfully um, answered a question I have in that if you rely on micro stepping for position, um, does, does it accurately hold that position? if you're part way between two full steps does the motor actually accurately hold that position maybe it does but um, for sure if you work in full steps um, it will so one of the things i could do um, having this remote motor arrangement is i could of asymmetric size pulleys so for example I could use a 40 tooth on the main drive shaft and a 20 tooth on the motor which would give me effectively 160 micro steps per mil or 10 full steps per mil which will give me a resolution of um, 0.1 mil per full step uh, the downside is, of course, that the motor would need to run twice as fast, so it might drop off its torque curve. On the other hand, it would effectively have one to two gearing, so um, you'd effectively have twice as much torque. Although, as I say, if the torque was a flat line against speed, that would be the case, but because torque drops off with speed, it might not. Now, of course, you could use 0.9 degree motors and get 160 steps a mil, but I've already got 1.8 degree motors and 0.9 degree motors from what I've seen they tend to have less torque than 1.8 degree motors so anyway having motors rem mounted remotely that way um, gives me quite a bit more flexibility on pulley sizes and, and so forth and will put less strain on the actual motor bearings anyway so it seemed like a good idea to me that that's um, one of the um, one of the things I wanted to incorporate in the design uh, so the other thing I wanted to um, say about this design um, is it's got to be it's got to be robust and reliable. So I'm trying to do it so that it's all metal. Basically, I'm going to make all the parts that I can from aluminium and so forth, and then probably once that's done, then I can get rid of my milling machine and lathe which will create a lot more space that I desperately need in my garage. It's all part of the um, simplify of my life thing that I've embarked upon. So it's going to be a busy year. So I've got, yeah, got lots more to design and uh, a whole lot of parts to make. But um, I'll keep posting here and for anybody that's interested, keep you uh, updated on progress. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.